Hello guys, Kim Chester here, bringing you another Elder Ring build. This build will focus on projecting a substantial amount of single target damage in a short period of time. If you are currently struggling with any of Elder Ring charging encounters, or looking for a new build to venture into the new game plus mode, then this build is definitely for you. This build revolves around the Marias Executioner Sword. The reason I am making this build, even though there are guides out there covering this weapon, is because of the amount of misguided information and recommendation. I'll simply show you how to build your character to really take advantage of that weapon. I'll also provide you with a variety of alternatives for some of the items required for this build. Next. Before we start, I want to thank you guys for your incredible support. I am grateful for your constructive feedback and constantly improving my content accordingly. Without any further delay, let's jump right in. The Marais Executioner is a great sword that scales very well of strength and arcane. It deals physical and magic damage. But what really makes this weapon stand out is the Ash of War of the sword, Aishay's Dancing Blade. When used, it flings the sword forward towards your target, continuously dealing damage while violently spinning. After that, the sword returns to your hand, delivering a final slash to your enemy. Prior to patch 1.04, you had to commit to the entire moveset of this Ash of War. But now, you can easily cancel the moveset at any point, making the weapon more reliable overall. It's also very important to mention that you can charge this Ash of War, giving it slightly more range, but more importantly increasing the number of successive attacks it deals. Thanks to a few items in the game that synergize with successive and charge attacks, every time you use this Ash of War, you will reach insanely high attack power levels that are simply not possible with any other weapon. To obtain the Marais Execution Sword, make your way to the Shaded Castle over here in the map. Navigate your way to the top until you reach Anmar of the Briar. Defeat him to get the sword as well as the Briar Great Shield. If you are also interested in his armor, you can buy it from Inia at the round table hold, after defeating him. While you are there, make sure to obtain the blood boil aromatic recipe. I just want to mention one piece of information before we proceed. Unlike some other Ashes of War in this game, this Ash of War scales directly with your weapon damage. The more weapon damage you can stack, the more numbers will dance on your screen. There are plenty of ways to do that, but I will simply list the most common and viable. Because I hate the idea of standing outside the boss room, buffing for 5 minutes for a 30 seconds or less fight. With that mindset, let's proceed to the character sheet. My class here is the Vagabond and my level is 150. Vigor is at 40 and Endurance is at 20. I didn't invest in the mind attribute because the Ash of War is very mana efficient. Strength is at 66. This is important since two handing will multiply your strength by 1.5, which means you will have the 99 points in strength. 14 in dexterity to meet the requirement for the Marais weapon. However, if you are using Milton's prosthesis, you can disregard that. 25 points in face for some incantations that I will list later and 45 points in Arcane. The first two talismans we have in this build is what really make it shine. The Rotten Winged Sword Insignia increases your attack power relative to the number of attacks you land, and it has three tiers of attack power, 6%, 8%, and 13% respectively. The faster you attack, the higher your attack power will climb. To reach the maximum tier, this talisman can offer. There is a lesser version of the talisman but the lesser version and the superior one do not stack. But it can be a good replacement until you get the superior version. The second talisman is Millicent's Prosthesis, and it behaves exactly the same way. The highest tier for the talisman increases your attack bar by 11%. You can only obtain one or the other per playthrough by completing Millicent Quest Chain. Go with the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia for your first reward, Either have a friend trading you the other reward or start a new game plus and get the other talisman yourself. The third talisman is the Shard of Alexander. 
It increases the attack bar of your skills by 15%. You get this one by finishing Alexander's quest chain. The last talisman is the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. It increases your attack bar by 20% for 20 seconds, when there is a blood loss in the vicinity. Along with the White Mask, which also behaves the same way, increasing your attack bar by 10%. Together, after using a weapon with the Sibuku Asha 4, you are looking at plus 32% increased damage. If you are not interested in using the Lord of Blood's Exaltation and the White Mask, you can use Godfrey Icon. It increases your damage by 15% every time you fully charge the weapon. God Skin Swaddling Plus Talisman is a very cool addition to quickly generate a considerable amount of health every time you cast a shades dancing blade. Now let's go through some of the buffs that will polish our build and push our attack power to the maximum. Golden Bow has a duration of 80 seconds and grants a 15% damage increase while providing a 10% damage reduction in BVE. The superior version of the buff is the Rallying Standard. It grants 20% increased damage and 20% damage reduction in BVE for 30 seconds. They do not stack, so choose one to use. I usually go with the Golden Bow so I don't have to rebuff mid fight. Blood Boil Aromatic, Flame Grant Me Strength, and Howl of Shabriri. None of those three stack. So if you see someone recommending two or even three of those buffs together, please correct them. Howl of Shabriri provides plus 25% extra damage, but comes with plus 30% increased damage taken from all sources penalty. The duration is 20 seconds. Blood Boil Aromatic increases the attack bar by 30% and lasts a full minute, but it does require you to gather materials to craft it. Flame grant me strength for plus 20% physical and fire damage and the duration is 30 seconds. The most damage benefit comes from the Howl of Shabriri, but I will go with either the Blood Boil Aromatic or Flame grant me strength for convenience. Some guys will recommend using Terra Magica, which is utter nonsense. Not only the damage increases it provides is so negligible, but you are restricting yourself to a small area in the fight and not to mention the hassle of switching items around to cast Terra Magica. Let's not forget that you need to invest a few points in intelligence to cast it. It's a terrible idea. For the Flask of Wonders Physic Mix, use Thorny Crack Tear. It behaves exactly the same way as the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia and Medicine's Prosthesis. It will increase your attack bar by 20% and stacks with those two talismans. I also use Spiked Cracked Tear for a plus 15% increased damage every time we charge Aisha's Dancing Blade. This weapon is not really your best friend when it comes down to AoE damage, and for that I have a couple of recommendations for you. Since we already have some points invested in Face and Arcane, you can use any of the Dragon Communion incantations. I personally enjoy the Fire ones because we're already using Flame Grant Me Strength, but any of them will do. Don't forget to use the Dragon Communion Seal to cast them. Another great option is to use Mogwin's Sacred Spear. It deals a destructive amount of AoE damage in a large area around you that can reach enemies through walls. But more importantly, it is effective by Rotten Winged Insignia, Melson's Prosthesis, and Thorny Crack Tear, while also blocking and benefiting from White Mask and Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman. It synergizes insanely well with our build while providing it with the AoE aspect that it badly lacks. I can never give that sphere enough credit with this build, use it along with the dragon press and you will have a complete build with no limitations. In the end, if you have any questions or more ideas to further improve this build or my content in general, please let me know. I am sorry if I took away a lot of your time, thanks for watching and have a great day.